Hi! In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most important concepts in computer science, and that is abstraction. So what is abstraction? Well, let me show you an example. Let's say I asked you, what happened during last night's game? Well, you could answer, oh, the Warriors won by 10 points. Boom, great, job is done, I have my information, I know what happened during last night's game. But you're leaving out a lot of detail with this answer. There's a lot of steps that went into the Warriors winning by 10 points that are being left out. So you could go deeper and provide a lot more detail with your answer. You could say something like, oh, what happened during last night's game? Well, first Steph Curry jumped up and grabbed the ball. Then he passed it to Clay Thompson, who dribbled it three times. And then, but at this rate, you're providing a lot of detail. And all I asked about is what happened during last night's game. If everyone talked with this level of detail, then we would never get anything done. We'd be talking about games for hours on end. I might be saying, whoa, whoa, too much information. Just tell me who won. But to be honest, we could go deeper. Things like jumped up and grabbed the ball, those are pretty complicated processes in and of themselves that we could go deeper and explain. So really you could say, oh, what happened during last night's game? Well, first Steph Curry flexed his quad muscles and calf muscles and his left and right legs simultaneously while flexing his left and right triceps and squeezed his hands around the ball. And then, but this is, this is insane. You're providing so much detail about the, the muscles flexing in his body when all I asked about is what happened during last night's game. This level of detail is not appropriate for the conversation. But honestly, we could go even deeper because flexing quad muscles, that is a complicated process. And we could talk about the biochemistry and the reactions happening in muscles to make this happen. But that is, again, just way too much detail, TMI. So by choosing to respond with the top answer, the Warriors won by 10 points, you have successfully used abstraction. You've pretty much left out the unnecessary details. So what is abstraction exactly? Abstraction is managing the complexity of a situation by abstracting away information and detail in order to focus only on the relevant concepts. The world is pretty complex. We could be talking at a lot of different levels of complexity, but we abstract away those really low levels. We don't want to talk about the muscles firing and the biochemistry reactions going on. We just want to talk about the high level concepts that happen during the game. So this conversation is one example of abstraction. And when we do this, we build out what we call layers of abstraction. So in this conversation, the high level of abstraction is the Warriors won by 10 points, whereas the low level of abstraction is Steph Curry flexes quad muscles. And we can keep going lower and lower, and we can keep going higher and higher. So we want to find the appropriate level of abstraction for the conversation. Now, how does this relate to computer science? Well, in programming, we use a type of abstraction called procedural abstraction. And that is defining the steps of a program without worrying about exactly how each step is going to work under the hood. The idea here is that imagine we were writing a program to Hokey Pokey. We could write the program as follows. Well, you flex your left tricep, then you flex your left pinky muscle, then you flex your left and you talk about every single muscle that you need to flex on the left side of your body. But the problem here is that this is so complicated. This program is going to be so long and it's going to be full of this nonsensical information about flexing each muscle. Instead, what we want to do is write a high level program like put your left hand in, take your left hand out, put your left hand in, shake it all about. This is much more simple and we can go in later and define exactly how you put your left hand in and you take your left hand out. But at a high level, this program is done. We've solved it. So this is procedural abstraction, not worrying about exactly how each of these steps is going to work under the hood. We'll go in and define that later if we have to. So the idea here is that computers are very complicated and we need to manage that complexity if we're ever going to be able to accomplish anything with them. So programming languages abstract away all of the complex details. So when you're programming, there's a lot going on under the hood inside the computer that we don't need to worry about. The computer is processing millions of numbers per second and putting lights on a screen and flashing pixels and electricity is running through the circuit. And we don't have to worry about that when we're programming because the programming languages abstract away those low level details. So let's look at the levels of abstraction in a Carol program. Let's say we wanted to make Carol move. Well, at a high level, we could just say move, boom, done. We've written our Carol program. But a lot's going on behind the scenes when we type move. That move command is actually getting translated into a language called assembly that the computer understands. And this is really complicated. We don't want to be writing our programs in assembly. That's, that's very low level. But to be honest, we can go even lower. Each of these assembly commands is translated into what's called machine code. 
that's only zeros and ones. So each command has a sequence of ones and zeros that it turns into, and that's what the computer actually understands. It's crunching those numbers to make everything on your screen happen. But if we had to worry about all those ones and zeros when we're writing a Carol program, we would never get anything done. No one would ever want to program because it'd be miserable. And what's funny is assembly used to be the standard programming language. There's a video game Roller Coaster Tycoon that was built 100% in assembly. So we're getting better and better at making these abstractions so that we don't have to worry about these low-level things. So programming languages give us the ability to speak to the computer at a high level. We can give the computer high-level instructions, and all these low-level things are abstracted away. So I think John Gutog, who's a computer science professor at MIT, said it best. I love this quote. He said, the essence of abstractions is preserving information that is relevant in a given context and forgetting information that is irrelevant in the context. That is perfect. If it's not relevant for this context, we don't need to worry about it. We only need to worry about the information relevant here. We only care that the word is one by 10 points, or we only care that Carol needs to move and turn left. We don't worry about all the low level things going on. So how does this relate to us when we're programming? Well, we can make our own abstractions. Functions are a great example of abstraction. For example, take building a tower. There's a lot of different ways to build a tower, and there's a lot of nitpicky details that go into building a tower. We could build the bottom ball, then the middle, then the top. We could do top, then middle, then bottom. We could do middle, then bottom, then top. There's a lot of different ways to do this, and each of these ways is going to involve a lot of moves and turn lefts and turn arounds and turn rights. So building a tower is a relatively complicated process. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just type out build tower and Carol knew exactly what to do? Well, we can write that function and then we abstract away those picky details. Then we have this high level building block of build tower and that's what we use. We don't have to worry about what's going on under the hood. That way, if we ever want to build another tower in the future, we don't have to worry about those little details anymore. They've been abstracted away. We have this high level building block that's much more relevant to the program at hand. So when you write functions, you are using abstraction and functions are an example of abstraction. So we, we say that a function is an abstraction. Abstraction is both a strategy, we use abstraction, and it is the result. So a function is an abstraction. So that is a crash course introduction to abstraction, and it really just boils down to forgetting about the nitpicky details that are not relevant at the current context. We don't want to talk about the muscles in Steph Curry's legs. We don't want to talk about the binary instructions in the computer. We just want to talk about the high level ideas to get the job done. So let's see some examples of abstraction. So here we have our tower program from earlier that has Carol build a tower. Now, if we look at my program, it's nice and simple. Carol moves, Carol builds a tower, and then Carol turns right. So build tower and turn right are both great examples of abstraction. We're using these commands in the program without worrying exactly how they work under the hood. So if we run this, we see that it works great. Now to prove a point, we could be using several different versions of build tower and the program would still work. So we really don't have to worry about what's going on underneath. So let's comment out this version of build tower and let's try this one. So they're completely different functions that solve the program in different ways, but it doesn't matter because either way, the program still works. So writing functions is a practice of abstraction. Talking in conversation is a practice of abstraction. We're constantly abstracting away the low level details and focusing on the topics at hand. So we'll be seeing a lot more of this as we go through the course, but abstraction is one of the most important skills in computer science. We're constantly on a journey to find the right level of abstraction.